Welcome to Dugout Chatter. We are going to see how America's pastime has shaped generations of young men and women into the determined people they are today. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Dugout Chatter. This is the first podcast. We're getting out of the gates in 2024, and today I have a reoccurring guest. He is the men's league masher. He'll hit the ball to the fence, but not over it. (laughs) He plays a little bit of every position. He is Chris Capaletti. Nah, happy New Year, guys. Happy New yeah, Year. Yeah, happy New Year. I like that intro. <laughs> that was good. That was good. Because yeah. it's true. Yeah. <laughs> I've seen you hit plenty of balls over the fence. Nah. Just 10 more push ups. Yeah. Yeah. 10 more push ups. Definitely. Just got to holler weight room when I hit the warning track. Yeah. Well, I think that leads us into a good opening segment for this podcast. So we were just chatting about what we wanted to bring to the baseball forefront today. And I think one good thing was, especially this time of year, we are recording in January. It's um, kind of basically prep for whatever season you're playing in most cases. If you're in high school, you're getting ready for the spring season. Uh, big leaguers are getting ready for big league camp. You know, same goes for college. You're getting ready for the spring season, as most levels of baseball are. So one thing we want to talk about is, like, what are you doing in the winter time? What about the fall season? Like, Chris, um, I played fall ball. The high school I went at, we had a winter conditioning program for the baseball team. So it was like, you know, organized baseball. It's rec baseball because technically it's not part of the school. So I did my own thing with that. Then I did the team weightlifting in the the winter and then got ready for spring season. So what was it like for you? Like, what were you doing in the winter to get ready for spring? And were you doing any of that in the fall season? Yeah, so a lot, very similar to what you just described um, as a high school baseball player, and even in college, you have um, you have a fall season, but it's not an official season. So there's scrimmages, but the the coaches are still watching. So for high school back in my day, um, the head coach was not allowed to participate in, in any way, shape, and for, or form um, in the fall ball, and um, so but the assistant coaches were the ones running the program and it was the same program. Yeah. Um, I remember um, my, my brother was in the same situation as you. When I played that didn't apply, they got rid of that rule. I think they straight up had a different head coach for fall. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think some schools did that. And then the rest of the staff. Yeah. Yeah. So we had, we had like the rest of the staff always in the fall. Um, But it was kind of like, a, you know, a little bit of weightlifting, you're still playing games. So you want to stay a little bit flexible. You don't want to be too tight. Yeah. Um, but like you were saying earlier, you can be a little bit sore in the fall. and Yeah, you, you, you can okay. play sore in the fall. You can still weightlift. Now, to anyone that, that's playing fall ball and fighting for a spot or anything like that, don't don't push it too hard with, like, the weightlifting. Yeah. Because you want to show out. You want to show off your ability. Yeah. I mean, in fall. Like you said. In fall, like. You're watching. More often than not in fall, no one's really getting cut. Everyone's making yeah. the team. Yeah, for the most part. Unless you get somebody like like fall ball tryouts. Well, oh, let's we get got like an absurd amount of tryouts, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like when my oldest brother played at St. Louis back in the day, they had like over 120 people trying out. Yep. And I think it was just a that mission to make it in the fall season. That makes sense. That makes sense because you got your you got your your core guys that are on the team that you kind of know like okay yeah, yeah. we're on the team. Yeah, it's the only guy that can hit the ball over the fence. Yeah, he's probably on the team. Guys, other guys coming to try out that are good, you know, and you're like, okay, hey, new guy. And then you got guys that come out and you're like, oh, man. Oh, boy. Dude. Okay. Cardinal yeah. sin. We don't, we don't talk, we don't, we don't have to talk about that too much, but, dude, you know. There, there was, um when I was coaching before, one kid came to tryouts in shorts. I'm like, oh. Yeah. You don't go to tryouts in shorts. Uh, Like, would you, would you show up, um, it, like, if you're a, like if you go to Renaissance fairs and you're one of those sword fighter guys, like a knight, yeah. you're not going to show out with, you're going to show up without your armor. Yeah. It's kind of the same thing. You dress for the dress for the job. Yeah. Dress you're you're wearing job. pants. Got to dress for the job. If, if you got a shirt with the number on it, that's even better. Or if you're returning to the program where that program's shirt tucked in with a belt, I don't care what shirt you use. What get, nope. Yeah. Pants tucked in with a belt. Show up, show up ready to play. Treat it like yeah. a game. Essentially. Right. So like, 
in between, so there was also a break between fall ball and spring conditioning, right? So a lot of weightlifting. Yeah. A lot of bulking up, getting ready to, you know, you're preparing for a Get your body a long to the season. strongest physical condition for the season. Yeah. That's like, that's the top priority because you see it at the major league level. Guys will come in at like the top of their weight in spring because throughout the season, it's going to taper off because you're playing so many games. And then the summer's the long stretch of the season. They call it the dog days of summer for a reason. <laughs> so it's like you got to get your body to a point to where it can withstand all the baseball that you're going to play. Right. You're going to burn fat and your body is actually going to eat the muscle that it has. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be sleep deprived because, I mean, these, these guys, major leaguers are, Playing, oh, yeah, a, playing a game one night on a flight the same night or they'll, early they'll get the into the morning. hotel the next morning at like 4 a.m. Right. Get a catch a couple hours of sleep. Then they got to be at the yard at one. That's why there's like no like real practicing going on. It's like show up, well, stretch the, out. They'll, they'll go in balls. and do, the, yeah, they'll go in and do their work. Yeah. You know, like cage works and fielding and all that. Sometimes I'll have a full day's practice before the game. That's nuts. I guess it may be on like a home stretch. Yeah, on the home homestead. stretch. Um, road, would, you're trying to get ready for the game. You know what though? Coming from what, like my job being as much as I've traveled, staying in hotels, isn't that bad. The only thing is it's like, well, they're probably staying in nicer hotels than you and I for, yeah, probably for yeah. the most part. <laughs> Cause I think like, well, they don't have to pay for any of their hotels or their flights and then they get meal money. Mm -hmm. Fucking yeah. meal money. I never got that in any of my days. No, no. I do for my job, but not not for baseball. I, no, mean, well, I, I never did for baseball. Hey, we play travel ball. You pay pay to play, basically. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like getting into getting into the spring as a high school player is a little different than you know your pro player. Yeah. Because I mean, what would you do for your high school conditioning? Like, what was a typical conditioning day for you? So our winter conditioning. Yeah, like getting ready for spring. Okay, so like the organized team winter conditioning, it'd be like we'd have access to the weight room and then it's like, you can talk to the coach about, you know, lifting or you can just go to your own weightlifting program. Then it'd be conditioning and conditioning could change any day, but you know, a lot of ladders, a lot of sprinting exercises. And like, it was more like intensive cardio and then body, body weight training essentially. So no weights and it'd be mixed in. We'd have a coach do our, you know, our conditioning plan. It'd rotate essentially a lot, but it'd yeah. be, Start out the day weightlifting, and then they'll have our conditioning plan for us for that day. Oh, well, sorry. We'd also play catch. We'd also play catch. <laughs> you got to keep the arm loose. Yeah, no. Th that's the yeah. biggest thing is arm care. And, um, yeah, you got to be playing catch. And, like, I actually remember one winter, along with the conditioning, I got into, like, this little tournament team with a guy who was, like, a buddy of my high school coach or played with him, you know, something like that. And I, I actually really liked that. Uh, I saw a few bats in between fall and spring. I saw a little bit of live pitching. Just That's helps important. keeps your eyes going, body moving towards the ball, just better for pitch recognition and everything. And I felt like that was really beneficial because, like, you don't want to overdo it, but, like, you don't want to go too long without seeing a live arm. Yeah, that's important. You go If you go a month, if okay. you go two One thing, weeks without yeah. seeing live pitching, that is, it takes a little bit of recalibrating. One thing that was so know? fucking annoying when I played high school ball, so the fields we play at are owned by the county. So in winter, the county would shut them down, and then we couldn't go hit or throw there. I'm ah. like, dude, you, you kidding me? It's like, I'm a high school kid trying to practice for my high school season, and then the cages and fields are shut down. That was the most annoying thing. You got a taste of what it's like to play up north. Yeah. Because up uh, north, it is not like Florida. I mean, but I built like a little batting area from, like my dad helped me build one in the backyard. I just put up a net and tee. So at least I could get tea work in, but it was mm -hmm. so fucking annoying. So what we would do is like, we'd had this grass, a field, you know, like cause school was huge and behind the performing arts center was just this huge patch of grass field. So our coach would bring baseballs that we play catch that I, I know right where that's I'm like, at too. Cause your school yeah. is pretty big. Let's not give away the secrets. Okay. Let's not give away the secrets. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Sorry. So kids. That, yeah. Sorry kids. Sorry. But that was extremely beneficial. So kind of like going to fall, kind of go through like my little routine throughout the the year of high school baseball, fall ball. We'll, we'll start there. We'll kind of exclude summer because, you know, I could be up to anyone's own discretion. 
fall, I'd weight lift because you can play, you can play sore. You can play sore. You can still get your reps in and everything. Then winter go ham on weightlifting. Then spring, I'd kind of taper off. You know, I want my body to be in like conditioned to play a lot more games. So I'd weigh off the, I'd lay off the weightlifting a little bit, but go heavier on the baseball activity, more swings, more fielding, more throwing, all that. Just like keep my body ready for the game. And I'd maintain weightlifting a little bit, but that wouldn't be as much of a priority. Yeah. And what people don't understand is actually playing baseball and doing just what you said keeps your body in shape. Yeah. And you're like, out there in, especially when you're practicing a lot, you're not just sitting around, you're getting reps, taking yeah. swings, you're running around. And like for me, you in shape. for me, it was always a point to get bigger. So I'd use that as like a lot more time to eat more, just trying to gain weight, trying to bulk up, trying to get ready for the season, throw harder, hit the ball farther, do all those little things, run a little faster. So you and I were a little bit <clears throat> opposite. I think I was always trying to slim down a little bit to get ready for season. Yeah, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm, dude, my freshman year, I, I was the team fungo. Basically, I was five, five, a hundred pounds. <laughs> Coach swinging you around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Well, yeah, that's good. Yeah, no. I, so I was a, I was a chunky, I was a chunky kid coming yeah. in my freshman year. You know. Yeah. I mean, I'm six one. In my playing weight, I'm one ninety. That's a good way to be. Back at. then, back then, I was, you know, I was a chunky kid. In mm. middle school, coming into high school, and then when I started playing tennis is when I really shredded weight, got some foot speed finally. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget this one practice. My, our head coach sat me down. He would sit every individual player down on the bench and ask us, what position do you want to play and why? I like coach it. sat me down on the bench. I said, uh, I'm a, I am a catcher and pitcher. And he goes, well, what about shortstop? I said, I think I have the, I think I've got quick hands for it. Cause you know, obviously throwing down to second base from a yeah. catcher's position, you have to have quick you hands. Have he goes, good he transfer. Goes, he goes, I'm not worried about your hands so much as I worry about your feet. <laughs> well, catching you gotta have good footwork. You gotta have good footwork. Well, we're in, we're in a little box. Shortstop is. Well, yeah, no, that's. Gotta not, have some, some that, range. No, I was going to say that that's talking about range, mm-hmm. but the fundamentals for the footwork and quick hands are there because yeah. I was actually one podcast I listened to Russell Martin. I actually didn't know this. He was drafted as a shortstop and hmm. he converted to catching, but that man was fucking nasty behind the plate. I believe it. Yeah. We're but talking then, about one of the most athletic positions on the baseball field shortstop. Yeah. But with Russell Martin, he was just really athletic and he was one of the fastest catchers. Like he'd still steal like 10, 15 bases. I'm like, dude, you're nuts. That's, you're, you're a fucking catcher. Some guys are diff- built different. Exactly. You know? And he's like, yeah, I think I could do it. That's okay. Hey, I remember one time, and I've spoken about this guy on the on the podcast before, uh, Taylor Motter. He uh, was a shortstop throughout his high school career, pretty sure throughout his college career. Um, he's still playing. He's playing in the majors now. He was with the Rockies last really? I heard. Yeah. Oh. He's my age. Yeah, he's got Damn. long, bl- you can look him up if you want. He's got long blonde hair. All right, hang on. What's his name? Taylor. Okay. T-A-Y-L. How do you spell his last name? Uh, Motter, M-O-T-T-E-R. M-O-T-T-E-R. This kid oh, was- he's got a Cardinals hat on here. Oh, is he with the cards now? Let's see what it says. Um, That's actually a kind It says of right now he's a free agent. Okay. Well, I know he's married. He has a kid, at least one kid. Oh, dude, he's... He played in the big league in the big league since 2016. Holy yes, shit. he was always a f- he was always like that one dude that you kind of he was, you kind of knew he was special. Yeah, he's been a career journeyman. I have a really funny story about him, actually, uh, from Gardens High School baseball. Him and one of our pitchers got into an argument. This was like during warmups or something. Or while we were taking I.O., which at Gardens we called the round. It was the round. And the round had to be within a certain time. Oh, Or yeah. the baseball was taken away and you do a phantom round with no <sighs> baseball. Just to get used to the motions. It's genius. Yeah. It's, it's fucking genius. But that sounds terrible. <laughs> it, it was kind of torture. I can tell you more about torture stories. Yeah. But they were fun. Um, so... We go on we go on water break right before we were getting getting into uh, batting practice and all this stuff. 
So I'm sitting on the bench and Mater comes up to my left, sits down right next to me. And he kind of looks around. And I don't know if he remembers this or not. He might, he kind of looks around. He's got this pissed off look on his face. And he looks at me, he goes, you know what? We can curse here, right? Yeah. Okay, he goes, the fuck? He goes, fuck these motherfuckers. He goes, you know what? Fuck them. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. And I know I am. And he looked right at me and I'm like, you goddamn right you are. <laughs> <laughs> With that attitude? Yeah. And sure as shit. He, he's had a long, he had a long career in the minors and he's been brought up to the bigs a few times. Yeah, he's been part of some six teams. seasons. Yeah, he's, he's a freaking baller, dude. They turned him into a left fielder. Mm. Um, power, hitting power wise in high school, you know, look a little the, above average. Look a little at the bit air he's getting on this jump at short. Good God. Yeah, that's some agility that's right like there. That's like a 35-inch vertical easy. Yeah, no. Well. That's pretty cool. So. Well, while we're on the major league topic, you know, we're in Florida. Spring training's around the corner. So we got plenty of facilities near us. We got in West Palm, Astros, Nats. A plethora of them down here. Yeah, Jupiter, Marlins and Cardinals, Tampa, Yankees are over there. And that's just to name a few. Yeah. Um, the Phillies facility used to be over there in uh, Clearwater. You plan on seeing any games? Um, I go sometimes. Yeah. If You know what? To be perfectly honest, if I'm not sitting behind home plate, I really don't like to go to big league. I, I mean, I that. big league game. I got to um, be close to the field. Unless, it, unless you're seeing the Marlins, you know, that isn't really happening. And, and who the hell wants to drive down there? It's so fucking bad. Yeah, it's a, it's a horrible. I have, I have to drive, make that drive for work. And I, I loathe it always. Yeah. Uh, but in Port St. Lucie, we have the Mets. Yeah. So where, where I've been in Port St. Lucie, we moved up there in 07 from Gardens. And the um, what used to be Tradition Field, I have no idea what it's called now. It's probably Clover Field, actually. I, Don't quote I, me. But I do remember it mostly as Tradition Field. It was a uh, digital domain for a little while. It was Tradition. Um, and then it, it, was, it was Tradition, Digital Domain, went back to Tradition. Then it would turn into Clover Field. Let's but, see what it's called now. Uh, to me, it's always Tradition Field. Yep, now it's Clover Park. So they did a bunch of different, they did a bunch of renovations on it. It looks amazing now. Oh, oh no, dude, it's awesome. I've, I've seen plenty of games there. Oh, I sick. actually remember, so one game I went there, remember when Oliver Perez was with the Mets? No. <laughs> I'm not a Mets fan, sorry. No, but you remember when <laughs> Oliver Perez was with them? Because uh, remember he had those, no. <laughs> he had a few baller years with the Pirates. <sighs> then the Mets signed him to a big contract, and I mean this man shit the bed everywhere like he Did needs he? new sheets. Let me look up. <laughs> let me look up. His, it, he didn't make it down the hallway. <laughs> didn't even get close to the bathroom. No, bro. Oh God. <laughs> he was just like, I can't stand up, or everyone will know. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, he had this one. So he had a really good year in 04. 30 games started, two complete games. One was a shutout, 196 innings, 239 Ks, 298 Ernie. Then the next year, you know, you start seeing a trickle out the back. Oh, boy. <laughs> 585 ERA, 103 innings, probably some injury issues. He only pitched 20 games. Then in 06, he made the move over to the Mets, but people were like, dude, you can see the stuff. He's got a good arm from the left side. He has a few good years with them. In 07, 356 Ernie in 29 games, 177, 177 innings pitch. Next year, a three, a three what? ERA? Three five six. That's it's good. I mean, that's not bad. No, that's I good. Mean, that's pretty damn good, actually, at the major league level. Shit. No, that, that that's good. That's but pretty good. you can see the control issues. He led the league in walks with 105. Oh, that's he led the league. Yeah. Then the next uh, year, Alaka Blam. 6.82 ERA in 14 games. Then the year after that, a 6.80, a 6.80 ERA in 17 games. So I went to a spring training game while they still had Oliver Perez. And the Mets had him on this crazy, kind of like Johan Santana. They had him on this deal. And he's getting paid a lot of money. He's not producing at all how they would like to. And then the Mets bring him in in relief in a fucking spring training game. And he starts getting booed. And then Mike. Did he get booed? Yeah, in a spring in Port training. St. Lucie? Yeah, at a spring training game. Oh, just, Jesus. All he did was walk in from the bullpen. He just came in to, you know, get his work in. Oh, that's bad. First batter, bam, bam, into left field. No way. And then the next one after that, it's like back to back. Then he's, 
he gets himself in more trouble. Then they pull him, and he's getting booed more. And then my cousin, who's a Mets fan, goes, "You suck, Ollie!" And this is all <laughs> you can hear. Like this man's getting. I'm sorry, but in your like, live in a spring training game. God, that's awful. Like in your own kind of kind of home in park spring situation. Spring training. Oof. Oh, I'll tell you a crazy rough. story. I watched one spring training game. I watched there it was when David Wright was still with the Mets. Uh, they were playing uh, University of Michigan. Because they bring, they bring, oh, yeah, major the, some, of the, some of the big college teams will play like yeah. their, their quadruple A team or something. Yeah, yeah. So David Wright took an AB against University of Michigan. Oh my God. That, dude, that's not fair. Okay. He hit. <laughs> now, you have to look up the dimensions of Clover Park. All right. I'll do David that. Wright hey, hit. Hey, let me look up the dimensions real quick. Let's look up the dimension of Clover I'm Park. I'm just going to say David Wright hit it over the fucking scoreboard <laughs> in left center field. <laughs> It's one of the longest home so, runs I've ever seen in person. Okay, this this field's a fucking big boy. It's left not field. small. Left field, 338. Yeah, so left center is... Center, left center is 371. Yeah. Center is 410. Yeah, it's a, it's a big league But park. dude, left center, like to hit over the scoreboard, that's got some arcing. That's probably at least in the 450 range. Uh, it was a high arcing <laughs> freaking rocket ship of a home run. Yeah. It's and, like uh, that one he hit in Philly when he came back after that injury. Bro, that uh -huh. was a fucking I remember that one. tank. David yeah. Wright has some forearms on him. Uh, so, so being that the, the spring training facility is in Port St. Lucie. Yeah. I've been a tennis coach since I'm 19. I pull up to this uh, tennis facility that I used to work at for about five years uh -huh. combined. Um, pull into the parking lot. Nobody is there except four guys playing doubles on one court. I crack my car door open and all I hear is F bombs, S bombs. I hear him cursing. I go, ah, fuck about that. <laughs> I'm like, God damn it, who are these? Oh my God, who are these people? So I went back to the shed to get my big basket of tennis balls because yeah. I'm ready to coach, right? And a ball comes over one of the back fences. I'm like, oh, let me throw it back to him. Who's walking up to me? David Wright. No. Yeah. Did you say I don't? I did. Not like he seems like a cool dude from what you can tell. On yeah, TV. not like I've, I've seen I've seen stars like this in person, like the, the Williams sisters used yeah. to see at Publix all the time. Mm. Um, you know, David Wright coming up. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know exactly who this dude is. Yeah. So I just kind of toss him the ball over the fence. He catches it. I'm like, hey, man, how you hitting him lately? <laughs> he goes, pretty good. <laughs> you know, dude. Like, all right, bro. Good stuff. Have fun. It, like I'm a Yankees fan, I love David Wright. Such a all around American kind of dude, kind of dude, like yeah, straight baller. It's just sad how his career ended because like without the like he had spinal stenosis. It's like man, you can't even really blame him for the injuries. Like, I, like just so Genetic, he right, yeah, just so he could get back to the big leagues, just to like play his last game on his own terms. He had to like do six hours of prep before a fucking game. That's nuts. It sounds miserable. But in his prime, like, dude, he was a 30-30 guy all the time. He's a stud, dude. He wasn't, like, the tallest, most, like, you know. In person, you'd see him, you'd be like, oh, he's a regular dude. Yeah. Nah. He hits bombs like you wouldn't believe. Did you see that one viral clip going around a little while ago? So, he's still, like, a representative for the Mets. And he, they were at a bar. I think they were, doing like, out on a West Coast trip for games. <laughs> David Rock walks into a bar. And... The it bartender, sounds like the beginning of a joke. And the bartender's <laughs> wearing a David Wright jersey. And, oh, he's, shit. and he walks into the bar. She comes out. She's like, oh, my. Like, she's like, it's David <laughs> Wright. Like, yeah. what? Oh, that's funny. Uh, I was like, that's pretty cool. But how much that, like, I, I don't, putting myself into that situation, I don't know how I would feel. Like, I walk into a bar and I kind of just want to be incognito and then hear someone wearing my jersey. I know. Like, ah, it's like, dude, shit, man. At that point, you gotta at least say hi to. You them. gotta have fun. Yeah, you at you least gotta, gotta say hi to them. And, uh, sign well, a napkin. I mean, this is this is a recent thing. Like, this is post his playing career, so it's probably wow. like, yeah, okay. no, th this was, yeah. So it's not like he was getting hit up as much as you might have in his playing days. So yeah. at that point, you're probably because you know you don't have to get ready for a game or anything. You're probably like, oh, this is cool. But still, this people cool. know him. Like, that's the kind of guy he was. You yeah, know, yeah. No, he left a good legacy on the game. Never, I don't think he's ever been in trouble. No. Like like Jeter, like never been in trouble. Yeah. In New York. Never had, ever take steroids or yeah. anything like that. You know, like these guys back in the 90s. You know one guy stuff. who I really like that people don't talk about enough? Who? Michael Young. Michael Young. 
Do you remember him with Texas? Yeah. Bro, that man had such a smooth swing, hands, quick arm, everything. Like, he was just a good ball player. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, guys sure. like guys like that, like, in this, like they got so underappreciated because of the steroid era. Like, who talks about Bobby Abreu? The only thing they talk about is that one round he had an 05 derby, but Bobby Abreu. That's an amazing round, by the way. Yeah. Dude, Bobby Abreu was a borderline Hall of Famer. Like, I think me, he should be in the Hall of Fame. I think uh, these guys, guys, if, if so, guys' names are that big. So his these are his stats. For those of you who are stupid and care about war, 60.2. You, you can tell if someone's a good ball player. I have no idea what war is. Yeah. It's a new stat for me. 2,470 hits, 288 home runs, 291 average, 400 stolen bases, 1,363 ribbies. 291 career average? Yeah. And dude, Yeah, he deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Those those are Just Hall of Fame that. caliber numbers, and he was only a two time All Star. That's the fucking crazy part. Like in two thousand two, he led the league in doubles with fifty, hit three hundred eight, twenty jacks, thirty one stolen bases. The guy That's was, work. The guy was awesome. So like, if and you, he wasn't hurt much. Like this man posted. Like you're talking about the the O five home run derby. You watch him hitting the ball. He's like a machine. <laughs> It's like watching a machine launching balls into right center field and right field. And that man, was at the Tiger Stadium at Comerica yeah, Park, right? Yeah, and that was back then. I remember like, that. It was harder to hit there. This is before the humidors and all that stuff. Uh -huh. and that, and that was before they pulled the fences in, too. Yeah, that's a long bitch, and he was hitting it out of the park. Yeah, he made it look like a band box. I know. Like, and if you uh, watch this guy hitting, swinging like that, and you're like, wow. Okay. And dude, just a smooth stroke. Mm -hmm. Even like when he was 40 in 2014, he's still like... He was probably like a fourth outfielder, you know, teach the young guys the way and all that. But considering his age, 248, one jack, 14 ribbies, 78 games. He's still playing at 40? Yeah, and he was more like just a veteran leader, and he was still putting up some numbers. Can't take my hat off to you, but... Uh, yeah, I know. Like, dude, that, that's, that's being a baller. Like, I remember he came awesome. over to the Yankees for a little bit. He had a couple hundred... Like, in 2007, he's with the Yankees. He hit 101 RBIs, 283, 16 jacks. The next season, 100 RBIs, 296, 20 jacks in 07 and 08. Like, the man just, he produced, and then he had an, an, another 100 RBI season in 09 with the Angels. So, in three straight, oh, my God. Actually, look at this stretch. Like, I got his baseball reference so page up. RBIs so from, are actually an important hang number on, for me. From 2003 to 2009, he driven 100 RBIs plus. That's huge. From, in a six-year window. That, so, that's nuts, man. That tells you a lot about the the so the, the he, mind frame <laughs> the mind frame of a hitter when they get in the box. So, for example, I hate I absolutely have this mental block not a mental block but I just totally dislike leading off an inning. Oh, me There's too. No one on base. Me too. I'm like, all right, I understand what my job is, but at the same time, um, leading okay. off innings is the worst. Yeah, I, it's not fun. Uh, when there's guys in scoring position, for some for some reason, I lock in. Yeah. And like nothing else matters but what's coming out of yeah. the pitcher's fingers. But that also I tells you everything. But that tells you a lot about his approach for from 03 to 09 driving in 100. Two strikes. He's looking to not just to get, he's looking to play. get some barrel on the ball. Sure. Hit the ball to the outfield, hit a hard line drive or, or hard ground Put ball through the infield. Play. That, that's playing the game selflessly. Right. Like, because that's, that's a lot player. of consistency. And those are his player. age 29 to 35 years. So he's kind of exiting his prime years and still producing. Exiting his prime, well, probably still in good and, physical condition. Yeah, no, definitely. But we're gonna also, we're going to talk about the here, mental yeah, maturity. But, and the stolen base total is pretty crazy. So from 03 to 09 in order, 22 stolen bases, 40, 31, 30, 25, 22, 30. It doesn't take a fast Bro. person to steal bases. It takes That's a work. smart person to steal bases. You had a chooch back in the day. But you were, okay, so you mentioned earlier before we started, before we started all this, that they're changing the rules with runners on base for the pitch clock. Yeah, now they want to shorten it to 18 seconds. I mean, that, like. It takes all, it, for me, that it takes all the a little nuances. It does. As a pitcher and a base runner. It does. It definitely puts it more in the base runner's favor, but from an entertainment yes. perspective, I like it. Keep it fast pace. No, from, yeah, because baseball needed it to survive and from an entertainment perspective because yeah. analytics have become so overly intrusive in the game. And like they train hitters on like, oh, you want to hit a launch angle. You want to hit at this launch angle. I'm like, bro, like how the, that's like, if I went to a high school kid, I was like, <laughs> oh, you need to get to a fucking 27 degree launching. Like, no, I'm not trying to tell a kid. 
No. That's stupid. I'm trying to tell you how to square up a baseball. You, know, you say, you see baseball, you <laughs> hit baseball, and you run. <laughs> I know. Th this is what I tell a high school kid. Hit a single that. off the middle. Yeah, so you're more valuable as I a know, and base like, runner. Yeah, and that they, a lot of them, they don't have the power to drive the ball out of the yard yet. Dude. You got to teach them how to hit before they can learn how to hit like that, you know? So I'm not coaching. I'm not coaching baseball anymore. But remember, I was coaching a little bit for this travel team. Yeah. Um, it. So I played for this coach back when I was 18, 19. Great coach to play for. He's like a wartime coach. Oh, God. Right? Yeah. Now, as, as a coach, didn't fit my style. I'm more the kind of coach that I'm going to prepare you for war and then... Go fight. Exactly. I'm not going to be. No, exactly. In, in the game, whatever. like practice is to prepare for the game. Thank and you. That's what it is. Because in the game, that's when you, know, you got to play ball. You know what to do. That's what no, you worked for. No knocks. No knocks on that coach. He, like, he's yeah, a and, smart and, baseball dude. Yeah. He knows what the hell is he, he, he knows what he's doing. And the game still give them like, you know, if you notice something with their swing, like, hey, dude, you know, yeah. little, little, basically tips of advice. Yeah. And then you take that into practice the next you day. Know, you move like like during the game, you move people around, call plays. Yeah, that stuff. Right. And I respect I respect him as a coach one hundred percent. And for but for me, it was just like, okay. I'd rather prepare you so much in practice so that we can send you off and you know exactly what to do. Yeah. Like for example, when I was 12, 13, I'm calling pitches as a catcher. I like that. And as a pitcher. I was doing it at that age too. Good. That's yeah. how, I mean, it's kind of how it should be. But Definitely the, at those levels of baseball, I think it's good to let the kids do it. Cause like th those, totally. those early years, that's your development to learn what to do for the rest of your playing career. And yeah, I mean, if you always have to look over and go, all right, what pitch am I calling? I mean, yeah, sometimes like if, if a coach wants to call the game, Sure, but you still know how to how to call a game. He should let you know before. At the very least, you should look over there yeah. for decoy signs. You know what I mean? Like the the a coach should always be giving signs, and, plays, and yeah, stuff, and sure. all that. Even if the catcher's calling the game, just first, so you're not tipping. First and third and one situation. Yeah, no, but no, like I'm that. still saying you should still like pretend like you're calling pitches as a decoy. It's like deking out the defense. Yeah. So like, because if you're not looking over, then you know you can see what he's putting down. For oh. his fingers. That's what I mean. Yeah. Still yeah, yeah. look at the dugout, have the coach give you his quote unquote signs, and then you call uh -huh. the game. They could be totally fake. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, here, good old number one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've only done that once in my life. What? Good old number one. Dude, sometimes when I'm a catcher, like what I will do is I'll either lay down a middle finger for the fastball for the fastball or throw it fucking. I remember one time I started throwing it harder back at you. Cause I'm like, Chris, get your shit together and then darted it back at you. You remember that? <laughs> yeah. I would do that. Like, cause it's not that like, I don't care yeah. if you make me work. That's my job. That's why I'm back there. But I'm like, dude, let's fucking get it together. Like, well, my the way I'll tell you that is throw it harder back to you. My issue lately is not bouncing balls in the dirt. It's leaving them, leaving the fastball too high. Everything else works fine, but yeah. But so, between the catcher and the pitcher, at 12, 13 years old, if you're a serious ball player, you should probably know what pitch to throw or what pitch to call. It should be. And if well, I, as a catcher, age, if I call it and, and you don't like it, shake me off. Exactly. The pitcher has the ball in their hand. My ego's not that fucking big. Yeah. Shake me off, dude. What do you want to throw? What do you feel comfortable so with? For, for game you calling know? at that age... It, just keep it simple. If they're laid on a fastball, throw another fastball inside. If sure. they're early, breaking ball away. Just like in that order. Dude, at 12 years, 13 years old. You don't need to worry about like, oh, did uh, I show them the curveball the first time and all that? No, no, no. You they don't need, even you have the control for you, that. You need to time. worry about executing those pitches and yeah. then play off of, you know, the swings that it's the guy's giving. Mostly, it's mostly f like f mechanics focused mm -hmm. because, dude, you and I have been trained well. Yeah. We're adults. We... Grown men. We are. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. And uh, we we know what to do. We have developed this foundation of baseball because baseball is all fundamentals. Mm -hmm. These kids are still working on fundamentals. I'm telling you what, dude. I would go to a, a 12U tournament, okay? And some of these kids, you could tell, like, 
He's been taught well. He listens well. This kid has not been taught well or he does not listen well. Yeah. And you get those you get those attitude issues early. Yeah. And it's like, what do you do? Like you just like beat your head against the wall trying to get him to fucking listen to you, or do you like so take him choice. aside during practice and go, Can I please show you a better way to do it? Yeah. Not the only way, but it may be a better way. Mm-hmm. Ah. Yeah. It was frustrating. It was fun. It was so fun, but it was also frustrating. Yeah. You know. For me, like, what I like about coaching high school baseball is, like, most of the kids, they got a better sense of what they're doing. So you can hang out with them a little more. You know what I mean? Because you yeah. can kind of get, like, it's it's fun having them a little more developed. I mean, obviously, yeah, you're still working on things. But, like, I don't have to teach you how to fucking throw a ball. Like, hey, step, step right foot first. My foot around, <laughs> my shoulders. It's like, I don't have to do that. Nah, you don't got to spend waste time doing that yeah, shit. Yeah, but, like, I like going out before the game on the line, warming up with the kids. And like, I, I still like being a part of it to, like, keep that camaraderie, like com- camaraderie going and show them, like... Oh, boy. And, like, because, like, a big thing for me is, like, I'm not going to ask you to do work I wouldn't do, too. That's why... I, Great point. Yeah. Okay, cause like we talk about that for a second. Yeah. Cause like if I'm telling oh God, like I'll go, like I, I'll go in, I'll field ground balls with you. Like I'll take swings with you. Like I'm not, I'm not afraid to do it. We had, Oh my God. I can't, I get, I don't like to beat my chest about gardens baseball, but dude, we had a, we had a core group of assistant coaches that would, you want to see how it's done? Okay. Yeah. We had this and plus, coach for me as a player. I had some coaches that did that. I thought it was fun as shit. Hell yeah, watching them, you're like, wow, dude, you are good. I don't you know. It's just, it's fun. It creates more of the, like, obviously, yeah. there's still, like, the hierarchy, like, they're the coach, but it makes it more like, oh, it's this, it's the boys doing this together. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It, it, I feel like that kind of stuff is what helps gel a unit. Because, like, talent's one thing, but you got to have team chemistry. You, you, you got to, like, you got to trust the guys here, like, the guy you're back, man. That, I swear to God, my two, my two... Or three favorite high school coaches. Actually, goddamn, I got like four or five, <laughs> six, seven. But uh, two, two of them, uh, Bobby B. Saw, okay, and uh, and Dittmer. We just called him Dittmer. But um, so B. Saw was an outfielder, and he would always scream at the outfielders, "Don't float to your position." You see where the fly ball is going. You get there. That's so true. Camp out so you can get the ball in. So he would just go out there and just show up, right? Yeah. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. And then I remember one thing about uh, I remember one thing about Brian Dittmer. He could not throw batting practice. And he would get so mad, too. He would get so mad. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, uh, and we had this one uh, pitching coach named, uh, we just called him VP. He was one of our legion coaches one summer, and this umpire had a strike zone the size of like a coffee can. <laughs> he was squeezing me on everything. He came out and was about to fight the umpire. The umpire's like, "You're gone. You're out of here." He goes, "No, fuck you, Blue. You're out of here. You're bullshit." I love it. Uh, and I was like, on the mound, like, "What do I do?" <laughs> You just sit back and enjoy the show, like man. Fourteen years old playing with these eighteen year olds. I'm like, what do I do? You you enjoy the show. That that's fun. Uh, but afterwards, I was like, man, he came out there and fought for me. You know, like, like yeah. he, he actually cared. No, you you got to do that. That's important. <sighs> so umpires, man, can't live with them. Can't live without them. That's true. Can't Fuck the robo strike zone. <laughs> I don't want it. Hey. Angel Hernandez says, fuck the, <laughs> the, <laughs> strike, fuck the zone. strike zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically, it doesn't exist. Yeah. Dude, I don't know. I think the electronic strike zone. I'm just tired of having more Technology. sanitary. It's, it's just like it makes the game more sanitary because what was yeah. kind of fun back in the day was like the veteran players. It's like like Andy Pettit, his 12th year in the league, would get an extra you know two inches off the plate. It's like. Then they say the rookies, when you're in the league that long, you get that call. I just started salivating when you said that name. Yeah. Andy <laughs> yeah. Pettit. One of my favorite pitchers. Dude, best pickoff move in the game. Even when he came back and he was an old fart, he was still dealing. 
Actually, yeah. actually, dude, one one podcast I listened to, it was a CC Sabathia, because you know nowadays everyone's velocity. You got to put both your testicles into it, max out all the time, and all that. I got choice words for that for another time, but. CC Sabathia came up in the early 2000s and played through like 2018, 19, something like that. And he kind of saw the rev, like, you know, how generations change. And he was talking about like how guys are more throwers now. But when he got to the Yankees in 09, he was playing catch with Andy Pettit. And he over, he didn't hit him in the chest and Pettit let the ball go hit like the backstop. He's like, dude, here we hit it. We throw it to the fucking chest. Amen. And dude, dude I was like, <laughs> yes, bro, as you. a pitcher, you got to have command like that. Yes. And that's such a good point. Cause when you play catch, you got people hit a target. It's a standard dude. Yeah. I've, I've ne- I didn't know about that. That is awesome. Cause you can be a junk pitcher. Sure. Yeah. But also with like the velocity, like, one thing is like, everyone's max effort. That's why pitchers throw like fucking four innings now and have all these arm injuries. Sure. That's There's why, a way to throw like that. That's why you don't, see them the third time through the lineup because you showed them everything they had the first time through. Right. And as a starting, as a starting They've seen pitcher, your slider. They've seen your best breaking ball. Yeah, you save that shit for later. I know. As a, as a, as a starting pitcher, that's so many, what I prefer. So many pitchers you know. from the early 2000s have that to say now guys don't establish the fastball. It's kitchen sink day in and day out. Yeah. Like, which is better? I guess, on, which fours. is better? I guess that's up to you. But Yeah, I guess when you... You think about know. it, and I don't know much about it, honestly. But, dude, but th- th- there's something about a starter that's in the seventh inning, and you're like, fuck. Yeah, this guy's going all the way. Let him go. Don't pull him out. But you know Let what him I mean? go all nine. Why an, not let him go an, all nine? As an offense, it's like, fuck, how do I, how do I not see this guy? You know what I mean? Aha, uh-huh. then it gets in their head. Exactly. And then you that, got him. That's, that's a huge him. thing. It, just, it fucks you mentally. You're like, fucking hit this guy. Yeah. Why is he still in the game? And then you go to the plate, and you're like, I'm not getting the fucking hit this time. There's no way. You've had, pl- I'm sure you've you know had coaches I mean? that come up to you in the fourth, fifth, sixth inning of a game and go, you guys are making look, this pitcher look like an all-star. He's yeah. nothing. Oh my God. Th- 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 then that dude, gets in your head. You're like, uh. The number one thing, the number one thing I hate. What am I not seeing the, here? Here's the number one thing I hate is when they're like, he's throwing too slow. Then fucking move up in the box and sit on it. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Make an adjustment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mention this guy one more time here. His name is Rusty Sams. He's not Rusty much- Shackleford. <laughs> <laughs> Rusty Sams. Pocket sand. Not much, not much taller than you. Yeah. Built, built like you. Hit bombs from both sides of the plate. Damn. Uh, we had the same pitching co- or uh, hitting coach. I'm sorry. Hitting coach. I've had the same hitting coach my whole life. Phil Ringer. And Phil, 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 Phil. <laughs> Phil, not Phil guy, the, the baseball guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's uh, he, and he, he breaks down hitting in the most simplest form possible. Yeah. So Rusty, um, I've always heard this story. Rusty was playing a game, whether it was a Legion or high school game. I don't remember, but he, he got all the way up to the grass in front of the batter's box. Okay. And, and the umpire said, no, you, you can't stand there. You have to be in the box. He goes, well, tell him to throw faster. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, then that, you're right. You got to move up in the fucking box. Yeah. It's simple. You know? And it also it also intimidates the pitcher. Yeah. Like, one thing like, wow, I- Wow, this guy's standing in the front of the box. What the fuck do I do? One thing I, I heard that just shows you, like, sometimes how major league baseball players can be a different breed. I was listening to a podcast with Gary Sheffield. We all know what a notorious popper he was. You can still pop him. Yeah, did you see that video of him that went viral? He's, He's smoking out, a cigar. Yeah, yes. in the rain, dropping yes. bombs. So one yes. thing he said was, depending on the ballpark he was in, that's where he'd position himself in the box. I'm like, damn. That's, that's actually really, really smart. That is. But the reason I'm saying like different breed is, mm-hmm. not everyone's going to be able to do that because when you position yourself differently in the box, pitches look a little bit different, you know? That's and then, true, based on and the, then the way you might, Yeah. Well, no, like, I mean, if you're a little more off the plate than normal, it's like the outside pitch is going to look different than how it would if you were sure. in your normal position. That's what I mean. Like, the way that the ball is coming in out of the hand is going to look different positionally wise. But, like, at certain ballparks, like, he'd move up and in on the box if it was a shorter left field or whatever, or if he had to take the ball up the middle. Like, I'm like, damn, that's really smart. Like, you're moving around yeah. based on the dimensions you're playing in. I played at this one um, college field in, uh, like outskirts of Baltimore. And as soon we were the visiting team. So I had a three hole 
get up to the plate. And as soon as I take my stance on the plate as, as usual, and I look over to the pitcher, and the fucking pitcher is standing way over here. I'm like, hey, hold on. That's center field. The pitcher's over there. It, something's not right. Yeah. Dude, it was like at least a foot, foot and a half off. I've played at fields like, like that. Where lined up wise, I'm like. Where the mound don't line up with home plate. Doc. Exactly. God. That was the first time I ever experienced that. It's horrible, dude. Because down here in Florida, we got, you know, we got nice fields. You go up north, every field is different. So yeah. when, so, so my high school program, everybody had to jog. We took a little light, little like walk around of the field to see if there, hey, is there a hole here in the fence? Is there a little hill here? Is there puddles? All that kind of stuff. That's more important up there because, dude, I played on a field, uh, the regional championship in 2012. Oh, it was spring of 20, 2013. And left field was at least 10 feet elevated. Mm-hmm. And it kind of sloped off. And this is on YouTube, by the way. I hit a freaking line drive. Boom. And it bounced off the bottom of the fence. That would have been a home run. Told you, you can hit it to it, but not over yeah. it. <laughs> Full circle. Something about it. Yeah. So, one question I got to ask you that's sure. uh, been all over the baseball world. What do you think of this fucking Otani contract? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of divided on it, honestly. Do I think it's too much money? Yes. Yeah. I think it's kind of ridiculous. Definitely. Especially like the stage of where he is in his career. Yeah. And like, I, I, you know, but the second, the so, second part of it is that, is he kind of a unique baseball player? Yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. Like, so, so I agree. Entertainment industry, make your money. Someone's offering you $700 million. Take it on the other side of the fence. I think uh, it's stupid because it's, it's, it's a smart it's, investment. It's more, I feel like it's more PR than trying to win a championship. Cause like you paid him for two people, which yeah, I get. He Basically two superstars that you could have. And yeah, he can, he can obviously do it, two but, to four. but he's on his second Tommy John and he's at the wrong side of 30 just about. So it's like you signed up for this for the next 10 years. It's like. But that's job security for him. It is. I mean, so it makes total no, sense it, for for Otani. It is, for him, but the, like, the 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 Dodgers gonna make sense. the Dodgers gonna make a shitload of money off of it. That's what I'm saying. Is like, yeah, are you doing stadium. this? Are you doing this more for the PR? Or are you doing this to win a championship? Because the Dodgers fill the stadium. The Dodgers have been flaming out in October for the longest time now, and I take the 2020 World Series with a grain of salt. Like I'm like. That's the first one you got since like the 80s. See, I don't know. Does, is Max Muncy still with the Dodgers? I think. That's a bad boy. Yeah, it's He's 190. He's a bad left. man. It's 190 strikes out and occasionally goes deep. I know, I know. And I know that I'm kind of going against what I said earlier, but yeah. I personally, personally, I really like him. He's a bad man. To put him in a situation, he's a situational guy. Yeah. And you know? He faces a good arm. He's... Done. He's still a bad boy. Yeah, he's got pop, but that's that's baseball he's now. Like, he, McKay's he, looking up his stats I'm like, dude, right like, now. 212, 36 bombs. Yeah, 212 is not good. 212 is whatever. His strikeouts, bombs. he probably strikes out a lot. Yeah, 105 RBIs. I don't know how the fuck he did that. 153 strikeouts. A lot of sacrifice flies probably. Yeah, okay, it's, it's not the most egregious case <laughs> of power hitting he with probably, a shitty average. I mean, 36 and 105, 212. I mean, you're hitting over the Mendoza line. I guess I can live with that. <laughs> Just barely over the Mendoza line. But this in 2022, this uh, is dog shit. 196. And 20, or yeah, 21 bombs, 69 ribbies. So just an educational thing for our yeah, boy like, Chris over here. The the Mendoza line is, is 200. Is like 200 batting average, which means you get a base hit, legit base hit, every two times that you come up and have an at bat 10 times. Yeah. And Out of every 10 at bats, you're getting at least like, two hits. The minimum effectiveness that you can have as a baseball hitter. Yeah. And to to me, I mean, it, 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 200 is not good. Yeah. But th- th- what did you say, 211? 212. 212, that's not good. Either. I mean, I mean that's that's pretty bad. But it's, it's not a good batting average. Guy. It's not a good batting average, but 212, I mean, it's okay for 36 uh, and 105. Slugging percentage. I don't know, I, I just, the, the slugging is 475. So that's right. that's right above, like, you know, like he's in yeah. the, he's in the, 
like just a step above above average. Yeah, but I still say like if I have a situation, just, there's a few guys I want to put. I'm like, all right, this guy, boom. Yeah, mm, Max Muncy. Yeah, I'm sorry, but he's a bad boy. But how do we find out? Like, how many of these are kick me when I'm down? You're getting the fifth reliever. You know what I mean? Late in the game, yeah. How many of those are those in the playoffs, especially too? In the playoffs, worn out. My brother brought up a good point. In the playoffs, it can work because any moment this guy could go deep, and that's beneficial in the For playoffs. Sure. Soriano was one of those guys. But Soriano could still hit 300. Yes. True. Uh, and steal. <laughs> well, here, here's the thing. Soriano could hit for a higher average and steal bases. So he's got another three tools than these guys. Max Muncy's not stealing Max, bases. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Max, bro. <laughs> he's, I mean, he's a one-tool player, but that's however you slice a cake is good now. I mean, I think it's kind of dumb. Hey, that's why every coach loved More me when I was young. But dude, I here, hit the ball. But here's the thing. I like, see ball. I hit ball. Th- this is what the get Yankees are base. doing that's dumb. It's like, here, let's get a bunch of these guys. You can all hit 200. The fuck you mean we can't beat the Astros in the CS? Uh-huh. There's yeah. no one can put the goddamn There's ball no in play against on. quality arms. No one's getting on base to score runs. Yeah. To go from first base. Do second base, third base, and you go home and you score a run. Yeah. And that's, you, I mean, dude, you beat other team by doing that. <laughs> you, you, you can't tell me that 300 doesn't contribute. That is just fucking oh, that is, stupid. To me, yes. Uh, I'll say it over and over again. The higher your batting average, the more valuable you are, in my opinion, as a hitter. Yeah. You hit the ball. First of all, well, the thing is, your batting average is high. Okay, it means you're like, putting the bat on the ball more often. Yeah. And you're moving more runners around. Your strikeout rate, your strikeouts are probably lower. Yeah. The thing is, you you do need your like Max Muncies, the guys that are your poppers. Yeah. But you need to have them spaced in between. You need guys that, that can give you quality of bats no matter what. You can't have a guy that's all or nothing. All like, you can't have a lineup of those guys. And it's just like we're favoring power too much. I think so too. I also think that it's probably because the pitching has changed in the past 10, 15 years. Yeah, I mean, it's it's straight-up challenge you know? pitching now, no matter what. Like we were just saying, you're not seeing a starter the third time through. There's, dude, no one's really thrown 200 innings that much anymore. That's the last t- time that happened. Wayne Wright actually did it like two years ago. Did he? Well, <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, Adam Rain, Wayne Wright. Yeah, like, no, like, there's still people that can do it, but it's that like... That guy's a freaking timeless piece of baseball honestly, majesticness. I don't think we're going <laughs> to see anyone get 3,000 hits again. Really? Yeah, I mean, you know that two hundred hits come by a lot less often than they used to. I see. I, I mean, dude, three thousand hits. You got to have a lot of two hundred hit seasons. And that you like, got to play a long time too. Yeah. You know. I mean, hey, people got the t- the contract still. They're forty for it now. Yeah. But that, like, that's what's crazy. Mean you're playing like, dude, a lot though. But uh, but these ten year, eleven year deals with people at thirty. It's like, how much of that do you expect them to play? Like, because really, a lot of people, their body starts giving in at thirty three. What are you trying to say? I'm talking on a major league level. <laughs> Whatever you'll you'll start. No, dude, I feel it. Press me. Yeah. Don't worry. Like that's when the numbers will start to dip a little, but that's when you're paying them the most money. Yeah. It's just, I think again, you're trying to trying to lock out the smaller market teams from the more premium players. Yeah, and, and I, don't know, I feel like baseball is just in a tricky spot right now because the like. Because Shohei Otani getting 700 million is going to tell the next free agent I can get at least. You know, 40, Judge got 40 a year. I can bargain for 45, 50 mil. You know what I mean? It's just, it's cre- it's creating these absurd contracts. It is, it is absurd. But also, back to the power hitting, these guys like Max Muncy, how are you going to stay in the league just being a bopper? That's going to be tough. They, they might just be brought on as a, you know, pinch hitter. But now there's DHs sometimes. in the National he's League. Not gonna, he's, so you ain't yeah. going to get the Matt Stairs of the world sticking around. No. Um, Who's the other pitcher that could really hit? Zach Granke could. Zach Granke, yes, Zach he could. Zach Granke could. Yes, he could. Maybe that's what I'm thinking Max of. Freed was the last pitcher to win a silver. Yeah, silver slugger. <laughs> Max Freed. Dude, the, the coolest thing that, like, I, like, I love old school baseball and, like, pitchers hitting because, like, yeah, I, I get what people are saying and whatever about the DH, but for me, baseball, you play position to grab a fucking bat. You know, like. Thank you. I, I, I like that. Some so of the best it, athletes on the field are pitchers. It was, I think, well, what, what year saying. was the Braves and uh, Astros? Was that 22? Ooh. Uh, I think that was 22. Or was it 21? 21 Let me 21. look it up real quick. We have technology, Braves and Astros. 
World God. Series. That's Dr. Google. Yeah. Oh, fuck, I'm dying. <laughs> uh -oh. no, 2021. So Thank God for backup technology. So in 2021, they're playing in the World Series, and Zach Greinke pinch hits for the pitcher, and then hits a single. Like, he ropes a single through the four hole. He pinch hits yeah. for the pitcher. Yeah, I was like, Whoa. I thought that That's was like pretty dope. I was like, bro, we ain't seeing this next year. No, nah, you probably might never, never see that again. Who one knows? thing, one thing I really want to see as part of All Star Weekend, and even though it's not a weekend, is I want to see a pitcher's home run derby, just pitchers. I would fucking eat that, that would up. Be cool. I would love that. You know, gosh, who am I thinking of? It was, oh, I'm drawing a brain fart right now. Carlos Zambrano was another good hitting pitcher. Yes, he would switch it. Zambrano was good. Yeah, Doc Gooden. He could hit. I don't remember seeing him that much. Well, he, he was an '80s guy. Oh, '80s '90s. Gotcha. But he would switch hit a little too. I think I Wayne Ray could hit for a pitcher. Who the hell am I thinking of? I don't know. I'll, I'm gonna I'm gonna text you later after I get out of the shower and it comes to my brain. As as soon as well, I'm just as soon washing as we, my body, like as soon as we hit oh. record, as soon as we stop recording, you know, we're like, God damn it, it was that guy. It was him. It always happens. Fuck. <laughs> 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 Let's edit it in. Yeah. By the way, this podcast brought to you. By no, 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 no. But free, they don't pay me for no it. No free advertising. They don't pay me for it, but uh, no free I, I still drink it. All right, Chris, you got any closing remarks for us fellers here? Hang in there, baseball fans. Baseball is coming soon. Yeah. Football is almost over. I know you're going to turn on ESPN. Oh, my God. Controversial hockey. opinion. Dude, I fucking hate football. And then you go to a bar, everyone's like, yeah. <laughs> like, it's the most annoying thing. I'm like, dude, I'm just trying to grab lunch with my girlfriend. Can y'all shut the fuck up? I know, oh. I know, I know this is a dude, baseball football podcast. football has so but... much dead time. I don't care what anyone says. Oh, baseball is boring. So, dude, half dude the time, I was thinking about that in the car develops, earlier. And the, I'm like, y'all are still huddling? Y'all are still going to play? I'm like, dude, it's been like fucking 20 minutes. Can you start uh -huh. playing again? So I heard a thing like if you, if you oh. had just, if you, if you had a, a video of just the action. A football game is like 10 minutes. Yeah, like 15, 20, 20 minutes or something like that. I mean, baseball's got a lot of dead time too. Okay. They, they only count like ball off bat, like not like pitch sequencing and all that. Like there's shit happening. Yeah. How much so action? I guess the, I guess the football, the football enthusiasts would argue with that too. Um, 15 to 20 minutes with 18 yeah. is average of action. Okay. So, so I can think of a few sports where there's just action nonstop hockey, soccer. Oh, fuck uh, soccer. <laughs> well, yeah, because I'm not a long distance runner, so fuck soccer too. Dude, the clock counts up. I can't stand it. All right, we're getting uh -huh. off to a useless rant at the oh, end. Oh, it does count up. I know, I hate it. Goes it goes up it's to 90 so minutes. so dumb. It no, count you count down. down. You count. Yeah, we've got five seconds left. We need to do something. We're at 85 here. minutes. <laughs> not, oh, we got 86 seconds and maybe stoppage time. Dude, no, you, you count down. It's just kind of really, right. you know, any, vague. Uh, any other useless notes before we close <laughs> out here? <laughs> I like this where we're going. I like kind of. Yeah. I kind of like making fun of other sports. Yeah. You just can't make fun of tennis or golf. Well, golf. I mean, yeah, I make that fun of it. That's fucking hard. It's hard you to know. watch. It all is right. hard. It's that, difficult. That's anyway. all we got for you here. All right, y'all. We'll see. We'll see you whenever the fuck next podcast is. Bye. Love you guys.